Welcome to the PowerPoint slideshow for Unit 28. In Unit 28, we'll be introduced to the concept of oxidation and reduction, ways of recognizing and identifying it, and things of that nature, uh, some of the terminology associated with it. In Unit 29, you'll actually see some uses of it. You should read sections 8.1 and 8.2 in the textbook prior to viewing this slideshow. Uh, topics here will be talking about the definition of oxidation and reduction. You notice the first three topics all say definition of oxidation and reduction. That's because we have three different ways we can do that, and more probably. We can talk about the loss of oxygen, or the loss of hydrogen, or the loss of electrons. And then the other topic we'll talk about is a term called the oxidizing agents and reducing agents. Give you some sort of a background on oxidation reduction. Oxidation reduction really involve a transfer of electrons. They involve a change of electrons, uh, which means that somebody's giving up electrons and somebody's taking on electrons, so that they always have to occur in tandem. They both have to occur at the same time. Somebody can't give up electrons unless there's somebody else out there to take them, and somebody can't take in electrons unless there's somebody willing to give them. So they always work together. Uh, substance, substances that are in what we call the reduced forms are high in energy. Those are things you burn as fuels and that sort of thing. Uh, they have the capacity, the capability of releasing a lot of energy when they are oxidized. So if it's in a reduced form, it probably has a lot of energy. You can have a lot of energy. If it's in an oxidized form already, it's relatively low in energy. It doesn't actually release as much energy as you'd like it to have because it already has probably some oxygen in it at that point in time. Oxidation originally was first associated with the addition of oxygen to compounds, but it's been much more broadly expanded now to look at the transfer of electrons and things of that nature. Uh, we're going to look at three methods for identifying oxidation reduction processes, just to kind of get an idea as to how this thing works. Think of it first in terms of the oxygen atoms. If we look at oxygen atoms, of course, obviously, to have this up have this definition be useful at all, whatever you're looking at will have to have some oxygen atoms in it. What we're looking at here is that oxidation can be defined in terms of oxygen atoms as the gain of oxygen atoms. So if in a process somebody gains oxygen atoms, we say that they have been oxidized. That sticks very nicely to the original historical definition of oxidation. Reduction, on the other hand, is where they've lost oxygen atoms. And this isn't too hard to figure out. If you're going to be oxidized, meaning you pick up oxygen atoms, then you're probably reduced if you're losing oxygen atoms in that process. And the example equation I have here, that's propane. C3H8 is propane like in your propane grill. Uh, it's reacting with oxygen. This is the burning process that goes on when you're making steaks and all that. Uh, it produces carbon dioxide and water molecules. Now, if you look at the reaction a little bit, and I've got those boxes drawn in there, if you look at the boxes above the reaction, they're focusing on the carbon atoms. The one on the left says that those carbon atoms in that C3H8, those carbon atoms in there, have no oxygen attached to start with. When you look on the other side of the arrow, you'll see that those carbon atoms now have oxygen attached to them. So they went from having no oxygen to having oxygen, which means that those carbons have been oxidized in this process. Okay? And if you look at the hydrogens now, the hydrogen atoms have no oxygen attached. So when you look at what happens to them on the other side, when they go to the other side of the reaction, they end up with oxygen attached to them. So they've been oxidized as well. So both the carbon and the hydrogen have been oxidized in this reaction. Well, remember I told you earlier that there always has to be reduction with it. So where does the reduction come in? Well. Think of it this way. Look at the oxygen on the left side of the equation. He's all by himself, isn't he? And on the right-hand side of the equation, he's actually combined with things. So that oxygen has effectively lost his oxygen content, if you want to think of it that way, and that oxygen has been reduced. Okay. So in this particular reaction, carbon and hydrogen have been oxidized, and oxygen has been <coughs> reduced. If we look at the definition in terms of hydrogen atoms, it's the same sort of thing we just saw with oxygen, except now we replace it with hydrogen atoms, and we reverse the words loss and gain. Oxidation is the loss of hydrogen atoms, and, ox and reduction is the gain of hydrogen atoms. And so, in the example equation, again, same example equation, if you look at the carbon atoms, again, what happens to them? They start out with hydrogen attached to them, don't they? And they end up without hydrogen attached to them, and that means that the carbon atoms have lost hydrogen, if you lost hydrogen, you've been oxidized. That's what we decided in the previous slide, that carbon had been oxidized. 
if we look at the oxygen atoms now in this case, what happens here? They start out with no hydrogens on them whatsoever. On the other side, they have hydrogen attached to them. The oxygen has picked up hydrogen atoms, and therefore it has been reduced. Okay, so same conclusion. Okay, same conclusion. If you want to think about the, uh, you can think of it either oxygen or hydrogen. In case it doesn't matter which way you want to think about it. We would say he had an oxidation number of plus one. We would say the chloride on that side of the equation has an oxidation number of minus one. Okay, so now, um, actually, that's what the rest of the slide talks about. Is <coughs> who's looking at those oxidation numbers? If I have the element that has zero for an oxidation number, if I've got a charge on it's going to be whatever the charge on that ion is. Notice that since the sodium went up from zero to plus one, it means he lost an electron. He's been oxidized. Likewise, chlorine has gone from zero to minus one, so he has been reduced. Okay, so you might ask yourself, well, how do I know which one of these great definitions I'm going to be able to use to figure out who's being oxidized and who's being reduced? Well, we've got some answers for that, some of which should be pretty obvious. One is, if you don't have oxygen in the equation, you're not using the oxygen definition. You've got to have oxygen there to be able to do it. Second one. If hydrogen isn't present in the equation, you're not using the hydrogen definition because you don't have any hydrogen in the equation to work with. So those two are pretty easy. <coughs> the definition in terms of the electrons is the most general one, but can get to be a little bit picky sometimes, a little bit strange sometimes until you get to be an expert at what we call the oxidation numbers. The other thing is that some fields of study will lean toward more toward one definition than what the other is. For example, in biochemistry, they all very often talk about the transfer of hydrogen ions. And so it makes the definition based on hydrogen the most useful one. Because somebody's picking this up, somebody's transferring this off. So, so the oxidation reduction idea there is, is very clean in biochemistry if you look at it in terms of hydrogen. And let's just take a quick look at oxidizing and reducing agents, because now that we've <coughs> got you straightened out, right? on who's oxidized and who's reduced. There's another term we like to use, and it, it goes back to the term agent. You think about what an agent is. A sporting agent, a sports agent, is somebody who works a deal and causes some athlete to get a lot of money, right? Well, the agent probably does in that case, too, but the athlete gets quite a bit of money. Think about a travel agent. What does a travel agent do? Back in the days when we had travel agents, Travel agents book flights, do things like that. They cause that person to travel, don't they? And so when you think about the term agent, it's really something that causes something to happen. So an oxidizing agent is a substance that causes another material to be oxidized. And a reducing agent is a substance that causes another material to be reduced. Okay, so if I go back and I think about this in terms of the electron definition for a minute, if an oxidizing agent causes another material to be oxidized, it means it's causing that other material to lose electrons, isn't it? Well, if I'm going to cause you to lose electrons, it's because I'm willing to accept them, which means I am being reduced at that time. So a substance that is reduced is what we call an oxidizing agent because he allows or causes that other one the option to be oxidized. If you go the other way, a reducing agent uh, is causes a, another material to be re reducing agent causes another material to be reduced, which means he himself is going to be oxidized. If I'm going to cause something to be reduced, it means I'm giving it electrons because if it's going to be reduced, it has to pick up electrons. Well, if I'm giving it electrons, that means I'm being oxidized. And so, if something's reduced. He's the oxidizing agent, and if something is oxidized, he's the reducing agent. Oh, arrows. Oh, good arrows. And down there, there's the key. Oxidizing agent is always a species that's reduced. Reducing agent is always a species that's oxidized. A couple examples. Uh, look at tin oxide and hydrogen in here. What's going to happen in this reaction, each tin atom on the left has one oxygen atom. On the right, each tin atom loses that oxygen, and it's therefore it's reduced, based on the oxygen definition, isn't it? Now, what happens to the 
hydrogen. Well, the hydrogen starts out with no oxygens, ends up with oxygen, so the hydrogen is oxidized in this reaction. Since the tin to oxide is reduced, that means it's the oxidizing agent. It causes the oxidation of the hydrogen. And since the hydrogen is oxidized, it's the reducing agent because it causes the reduction of the tin oxide. That's the end of the Unit 28 slideshow. You should look at the self-assessments at the end of sections 8.1 and 8.2. Uh, you should look at the self-assessment in Blackboard and be ready to answer questions about this on the quiz and on the final exam.